week, uh, I just kicked the. F- I told Eric not to kick the stand. I kicked the stand. This week's uh, show intro music is <clears throat> Terracide. You can check out their music at Bandcamp, uh, Terracide.Bandcamp or something like that. I'll fucking. I'll put a link in. Click on the link. Buy their album. I it's helped, where I say it yeah, is. Yeah, I helped them. I helped them. So I supported it with their crowdsourcing money funding project. So and it's good. I, mean, I knew it was good, which is why I, I put my name on the inside sleeve. So you should fucking buy a t-shirt and a shot glass and an album and tell your friends. And then you'll be cool. Or I'll kick your ass. Yeah, or Eric will come to your house and kick your ass. So that's what I do. Anyway, it is the Thursday night, Friday morning podcast. It's called the Thursday night, Friday morning podcast because, uh, well, I, I explain it to him, Eric. It is Thursday is over. Friday it is beginning. We've both just gotten off of a 10-hour shift. Slap happy. And we're going to drink NOS High Performance Energy Drink. We're switching it up this week. And then we're going to talk about a, a disgusting subject that's getting a lot of attention lately. Mostly bad, because why would it be good attention? And we're we're going to cover it, uh, and we, neither one of us, first of all, are, we're going to preface this by saying we're not experts, we're not trained therapists. <laughs> yeah, not by any means. We're not politically affiliated with anything remotely popular. Just two guys. We're just two guys. With Giving our, our opinions. With our limited world experience, which both involves living abroad and whatnot. Yeah. All right. So uh, the the topic, the nasty, dirty little R subject, word. yeah, is uh, it starts with an R and it rhymes with grape, uh, grape, <laughs> without the G. It happens in prisons, oh, and wow. it seems it happens elsewhere. Well, it happens all over the place. Apparently, uh, I don't know the statistics, but it's uh, very popular in South Africa. Let's also add that we don't find this amusing, um, an amusing topic. We don't find it a funny topic at all. So but I do it, think it's it, okay to joke about it. Well, here's the thing. Is, yeah, I don't think as much as we're joking about it, I think the way human beings deal with things, much like we will deal with this topic at hand, is to make light of it. Exactly. We, but I mean, but at, at the same time, both Nathan and I absolutely, 100%, positively do not find the subject to be funny at all. Not, at, not, in, a, not in a matter of... Um, like, hey, hey. kind of weird. Yeah, like, ha ha. <laughs> Unless you were like a rapist that got raped in prison, that's kind of funny. Yeah, like if you were like a. That's ironic. A pedophile, and you get thrown in San Quentin, and, uh, and then the, you the, get, the Nortinos run the train on you. I find that amusing. But if if you're a lady who got too intoxicated at the club after going we, out, we, on have your, we even said this about rape culture. What's that? I don't think we even actually stated what. The topic is today. Oh, well, we kind of did. We said it was rape, rape culture. We're going to talk about all things rape, statutory rape. What a what a lighthearted subject. <laughs> <clears throat> well, you know what? It's probably good that two regular guys like us talk about it because this is one of those subjects that probably has gone for so many years, so many decades as, you know, being hushed up. Well, uh, what, what what what's probably going to get us to is there's going to be some... I don't know what wing to put. Some far-reaching winged feminist that goes, men have no right to talk about rape because they don't get raped. That's not true. It's not true. Men do get raped. Anyhow. Men, men get raped by women. Yeah. Should a super elite feminist get mad at us? Hey, so be, we give you something to be Actually, new. a friend of mine got raped in high school. We got something new to for you to bitch about. And it was a dude. Got raped by a chick. Yeah. And everybody laughed at him. I think I heard this story. I won't name any names, yeah, but it was a it was a party at his house, and she was a heavy gal. And uh, after everybody passed out, she tied him up and had her way with him. And he woke up and was screaming for help. And uh, I wasn't there, but apparently everybody just laughed at him and went back to sleep. Yeah, I know the story now. The female's initials are R D. Indeed, sir. Okay, yeah, I know the story. Yeah, so it can happen to anybody. So, what do you want to start off with? I don't know exactly. It's a very complex issue. It, there, there's really no good place to start. Just one thing that dawned on me, because Nathan brought up earlier in the week that this was going to be the topic at hand. So, I tried to formulate what exactly am I going to talk about. It's the come, topic of destruction. Yeah, well, aside from that. What I mean is, uh, at, throughout the week, once Nathan gives me the topic, because he is the boss, the rest, the of, the, the rest of the week, I, I try to 
come up with what is what it what am I gonna say? I try to come up with meaningful things to yeah. say. And one of the main things that came <laughs> to my mind that I thought is something that we should talk about is to me, rape is actually not all about sex as much as it is about power. Would you agree or disagree? I think it depends on the situation. And it, 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 what kills me, though, is the world is such a big place. There's probably some person somewhere that hears about rape and they're like, Yeah, good. If people deserve to get raped. I'd rape people if I could rape people. I agree with you because, you know, it's not like there's one guy out there raping you know what I mean? Yeah, he's like, I'm the rapist. Nobody rapes more than... Actually, there might be some guy out there going... Like, he's got a score, and he's like, I'm going to rape 73 women, and that'll be my top score before they catch me. He's like itching it into his bedpost, or his yeah. belt, or his arm. Or whatever. Which leads It's like me Danny Trejo's character in uh, Con Air. I don't remember. He was a serial rapist. He had like oh. a, he had some roses and vines tattooed on him. He said each rose petal represented a woman he'd rape. That's pretty hardcore, man. But uh, I guess, I mean, I really don't know. It's like we're on the subject of rape, but how to approach it? I want to talk about it's going to be randomly because we're tired and we're on we're strung out basically. Okay, did something. What what was the initial reason you decided to make this be about rape? Uh, because of fucking Elliot Rogers. Okay, well, just start there again. Well, Elliot Rogers, he didn't rape anybody, but it surprised me that he didn't because, you know, if you're gonna murder people and you're gonna kill yourself and your entire bitch fest was about not getting any, you'd think he would be like, "Give me the pussy and nobody gets hurt." So, would you agree with me once again that? Had he raped someone, or what he did do, wasn't that a situation of power over sexuality? Yeah, I guess so. It stemmed from sex, right? Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it, it, I think it made him feel like he lacked the power. That's weird. Though. Ugh, how can I articulate this? Because he felt like, you know, well, maybe it wasn't about power, though, because he already assumed, like, he's like... I'm the supreme gentleman. Nobody is better than no, me. No, no, I agree with you. I think he felt that he was. Right. But I think the I, I think he he somehow connected the ability to, to get sex with having power. And I think that he felt that women and what he called alpha males did not respect the power that he felt he had. Right. Thus, he was unable to have sex. So it's like the two were combined. The two were related when it comes to this situation. In my mind, this is just my opinion. Mm -hmm. Well, it's interesting. But it's... What what also kind of gets me, too, is... Um, everybody's got their way that they think about these types of things. And it's always, like, kind of just in their head. Like, well, if I do this, then it prevents that. But they don't think about, like, you know, the fact... Like, how can I put this? Their scope is limited based right. on their own experience. For example, this is this is a good way to segue into this thing. In South Africa, rape is such a problem that they invented uh, an inter... It's a chastity belt. It's not sorts. a chastity belt. It's basically... It's it's like a... It's an uh, anti-rape device. It's an anti-rape device that a woman puts in her... Cavity, uh, body cavity. Her body cavity. Uh, the vaginal body cavity. And it has teeth in it. So if a dude penetrates... He gets penetrated, like he gets bit, like the teeth mm -hmm. go in and it, he pulls out and his dick is locked into this fucking... It's like a Chinese it's finger... It's a fucking Chinese finger trap Iron Maiden for your yeah, dick. but it's a Chinese dick trap. And it has to be removed by a doctor, so you go to the doctor and go, well, I got this thing on my dick, they go, well, who were you trying to rape? Well, see, then that's what I thought about, because you told me about that, but, and but I hadn't the, heard about it before. But don't you think the sick fucker that would already be sick enough to rape a woman, that once his dick got stuck in said device they'd probably just kill her well that's what you said but here's what my thought was as soon as I saw this thing and it's pretty gnarly looking the first thought that pops into my head well as soon as the rapists find out about this thing they're just gonna be raping assholes yeah they'll just start bungholing everybody yeah it'll be like well now you're gonna get raped in the ass well you know I guess that's better I get that, that's, that brings me back to the scope of the person that thought of this it was probably it was a, a woman I think she's like well if I put this up there nobody's gonna rape me it's like no now you're getting ass raped well hopefully you know maybe I mean you can't deny her I mean it was a good idea yeah, but it was a good idea, right? she didn't think about 
you know, the extremes that other people are willing to go to or what the reaction might be. Yeah, if you're already a sick, depraved piece of shit that you have, let's let's talk about that to begin with. The fact that I can't comprehend a man raping a woman. And I, I can't sit here and tell you that I could comprehend a woman raping a man because clearly I'm not a woman. But what I'm saying is, is from my perspective, I've been all across the country. I've been all across, not all across the world, but I've lived abroad. And I firmly believe that if you want to get laid, if you just take the time to get your ass off the couch, walk outside, get in your car, go somewhere, you will fucking get laid. Yeah, all you have to do is go somewhere where there's people. Eventually, that's, what was it, Henry Rollins said at one of his uh, spoken word things, somebody wants to have sex with you somewhere. Somewhere, yeah, <laughs> yeah. right. You will find that one person, you know, they might not be the ideal person for you, but... Well, that's the thing, that's, are, are you, but then again, are you the ideal person for anyone right, else? Right, right, I, I don't think, I mean... If, if needing to get laid is so fucking bad for you that you contemplate forcing a man or a woman... You raping someone? If that's if, if that's how sex is to you, it's mm-hmm. so bad that you're to the point where I can't you, understand getting that to that. I point can't either. either. I can't either. I, I couldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. I'm not. It's not. You know. It's not my grain. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It makes me. It's. I'm thoroughly disgusted just with the idea that a man would do that to someone or a woman. I think you know. You've known me long enough to know that probably the number one thing that will set me fucking off is injustice. I it, it doesn't matter. Like I, I I could not even know someone if I if I run into someone and I see Eric's some... actually Batman. No, I'm not Batman. <laughs> I'm broke. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm broke. I didn't say Batman. you were Bruce Wayne. I said you were Batman. Well, Batman is Bruce Wayne. So. No, Bruce Wayne, Wayne Manor. Bruce Wayne wishes he was Eric. He does. That's why he dresses up like Batman. Yeah. So uh, back on the subject. So, well, I mean, that's a beginning. We can only, you and I can only talk about the, the subject so much because luckily we're both decent guys and we wouldn't do such a thing. Well, let's talk about this other thing that, that happens in college a lot. Obviously, a bunch of drunk teenagers and, you know, early 20-something people are going to get in situations where they're going to have sex and they're going to be, on like, fucked up and shit. And then a lot of times, well... I'd say, I don't know what the ratio is because how can you know for sure? But there are instances where a woman will wake up with somebody that they wish they hadn't gone to bed with and then regret it and then go rape. That's That happened. There was a, a video that circulated, I think it was earlier this year or last year. I, f- I forget it was what the, where the school was. But basically, uh, this dude hooked up with this girl like right outside of the bar, mm-hmm. like right outside of the bar. Yeah. And if they hadn't been in public, because people videotaped it, because uh, she claimed she went to the police later saying that he raped her. Well, like fifty people had cell phone video <clears throat> of her like forcing him to go like go down on her yeah. in public. And so when she so, was like, so they had video yeah. of her engaging in an yeah. offensive manner, not right? A right. Offensive manner. Uh, okay. Yeah. Like she's clearly enjoying it. She's participating. She's not resisting. She's. You know, enti- she's forcing his face yeah. into her whisker she, biscuit. She's enticing the situation, yeah. and then later she was like, well, "I didn't want to hook up with that guy. He's going to go to jail." I'm like, "No, no, no. That's not how it works." And I knew girls in college that were like that too. Like I remember having a class, and uh, this, this is like a bleach blonde haired chick, and she's like, ah, "I hooked up with this dude over the weekend. He's such a fucking creep. I'm gonna." You should tell everybody you rape me. I'm like, that's fucking low, bitch. That's not even fucking funny. That's not even something yeah. to joke about. Mm-hmm. You know. So it's like. So once again, we're it's back. Like, what, you're gonna ruin somebody's life because you were drunk enough to have sex with an Ugmo? <laughs> it's like buyer's regret, right? It's fuckers regret. Fuckers regret. It's fuckers regret, and you fucked up, and now you're, you know, hey. I think fuckers regret is just as bad of a action as rape itself. If. You oh, had, absolutely. If you had consensual sex with somebody and then later claimed that they raped you, you're a as big of a piece of shit as the rapist. Absolutely. Because you're going to fuck up somebody else's life. Like, that's going to that's gonna put them on a registry. They're going to lose their job. They're never going to be able to get a decent job. You know, you you fucked them up because... Yeah, you had the potential to actually destroy a life the same way rape destroys lives. Exactly. Right? Yeah. And any time you do anything that destroys somebody else's life... That's 
that to me is the the primary offense. That's pretty much, as far as I'm concerned, the only crime that should be punishable. Like, if you do something that physically fucks with somebody else, that's a crime. Like, and that's something. But that that's a category that I believe rape falls into. Right, right, right. Because that that shit doesn't go away. That's not something. that's not like words. You know what I mean? It's mm-hmm. like, what's the thing? Yeah, you've permanently damaged this person's reputation. Well, you've damaged your reputation. God knows how they're going to fucking interact with the rest of society from right. then on out. Well, Trust issues, you know. Well, and, it's well, missy that, that's, issues. That's, that's, I meant to say that for uh, the fucker's regret, as we're calling it. But for actual rape, I mean, you've you've destroyed some... You know, like, you fucked them up for life, you know? That's what I mean. Yeah, it's never going to go away. Like, uh, It's going to be something that they're probably going to think about... Well, yeah, and then any time they try to get close to anybody else, it's going to come up too. Like, well, yeah, uh, you know, if they fall in love, and then you know, even if they don't fall, if, if they just go to have consensual, casual sex, it's probably going to be in the back of their mind. Hey, I had sex one time, but I didn't want to. I was right. forced to. You know? Right. Yeah. Always. And then, and then there's situations too. Like uh, a friend of mine out in California dated this chick, and uh, she had been uh, raped. For lack, there's no, there's no nice way to say that word. It's no, just a not. fucking shitty word. And uh, he couldn't like go do like certain positions with her because she'd be like, nope. It like immediately <clears throat> done. Excuse her out. Right. Yeah. Yep. So he was like, that was awkward. I'm like, well, what can you do, man? That's somebody else ruining not only her life but fucking up your life. Well, yeah, now his life's fucked up because now he's gonna be on pins and needles because he's never gonna know. When he could do something that he yeah. has good intent, but that intent could lead to her yeah, having gonna, like flashbacks. She's gonna have a total breakdown, and that, that's it, you know. And then what does he do? Maybe he's so weirded out by the situation that he feels like he needs to leave her. So then there's another issue that she's gonna have to deal with that she can't keep somebody around because she's so fucked up by what someone else did to her. Mm-hmm. It's a fucking vicious cycle. It's a never ending. I mean, uh, <clears throat> you were talking about the couple. They got it on outside the bar, and luckily it was videotaped. Right. There's a... I think we talked in the past about the fact that I do Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Mm-hmm. And the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu community, even globally, is actually really small. It's a tight, tight, tight-knit tight community. So, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu uh, practitioners that belong to clubs throughout the world, if there's anything kind of hanky up at all, we'll all hear about it in the fucking no time you know mm-hmm. what I mean because like I said the community's small we all gravitate to the same sites online and whatnot. so anyway the point I'm trying to get to is there is a notorious Brazilian Jiu Jitsu instructor um, he has a shady background to begin with but he has allegedly and I'm going to use the word allegedly because we choose not he's got a shitload of money so if anyone ever brings up his past uh Shadiness, he likes to go after him, you know, get a lawyer, mm-hmm. this or that, threaten legal action, whatnot. So, I'm gonna do what's right and use the word allegedly. His name is Lloyd Irvin. Uh, he is a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu instructor in Maryland, and I'm trying to think of the, I believe it's called Prince, it's inside Prince George County, Maryland. So, it's, it's a really shitty fucking part of Maryland. So, anyhow. Lloyd Irvin and a lot of people in the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu community, it just started to come out about a year ago, maybe two years ago. Um, some people had known about it, some people had heard about it, but if so, for whatever reason they decided to keep it hushed up, which is another thing that I think permeates throughout rape, the mm-hmm. rape culture mm-hmm. is, is, oh, yeah. is no one wanting to talk well, about it. Well, that's another problem too is victims about it are so ashamed of it you know well they get shamed into it right and 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 then they don't want to talk about it because well that's that's the thing too like uh especially with i think dave Chappelle had like uh he, he, part of one of his stand-up bits was you know if a man gets raped you that that shit goes to the grave you know you're not gonna tell anybody yeah oh caught me slipping right yep. isn't that the yep, one? that's yeah. the one that's the one yeah so uh so yeah lloyd Irvin. It came out <clears throat> that while he was in college, he went to a all-black college. I forget the name of it. I believe it was an all-black college. Or possibly it was an all-black... Yeah, that's that's what it was. It was an all-black uh, fraternity that he was part of. So it was he and some of his frat brothers had a party. 
and a very young lady was invited to the party <clears throat> and she ended up having to go to the police and reporting that she was raped by Lloyd Irvin and I believe there's like seven other guys. Now, out of that seven guys, two of the guys were prosecuted and sent to prison. Now, allegedly, Lloyd Irving was one of the gentlemen who raped this young girl. And the way that he got off was he got off on a technicality. And the technicality was that in his own testimony that he was willing to participate. Basically, it was seven guys. Uh, they took turns. Several guys took turns holding the girl down while the other ones uh, forcefully made her perform oral sex, vaginal, and anal. And... Seven guys and Lloyd Irvin allegedly was one of those. And in his own testimony, you can you can find it. It's it's online. His name is Lloyd Irvin. It's L L O Y D Lloyd. Yeah, Irvin I R V I N. So you can look it up. It's all over. Um, the entire case is actually you can look up Lloyd Irvin rape truth. There's a you can type that in a search engine and there's a whole site. There's a guy that's documented everything uh, because Lloyd Irvin is gone. He's gone to such ends to try to erase it from the internet that he does. Uh, what's what's it called? Is it like optimization, or what is it when you when you try to control? If someone uses a keyword, oh, uh, what is that called? I forget exactly, but yeah, he's basically just trying to. Um, so here's it's trying to save his rep, basically. Right. So let me get. I'm getting so far off topic. I apologize. Exactly. Anyhow, what he did was, um, I believe this. Case took place, he was in college, I think it was in like 1991, 92. So his own testimony to get himself out of being prosecuted for rape was he said he was willing to participate, but he was unable to achieve an erection. Okay? So all this stuff was covered up until about a year or two ago, and it started to come up. And now he says, I'm not a rapist, I'm not a rapist. Now wait a minute, motherfucker. You, in your own... Right. And your own defense was that you were willing to participate. I'm going to rape her, but I can't get it up. So does that, does, doesn't the intent alone make you a fucking piece of shit in my it eyes? It makes you a piece of shit, but technically you didn't commit the crime. I think he should still be accessory to rape. But he's still a rapist. If he had every intent to rape a woman, that to me means that that seed is already in his mind somewhere. Okay? Well... Okay, so well, okay, he, I, he I, was disagree, a, I disagree that he is a, a, a he, unless he was a potential rapist. Potential rapist. Let's say that. Okay. I, I would never accuse anybody of actually doing anything unless they did it. Like, yeah, you know, yeah, you're right. You're like, right, if, right. If, if, if I, you know, if I'm I, a little passionate about the subject, so I, I, I spoke out of, but yeah, it's, of emotion. I, it's, so, it's so that's what went down. Okay, right. Uh, the point I'm trying to make is that the jury believed that a rape occurred. Enough that two of the seven, I believe it was seven, mm -hmm. my approximations could be off, but two of the gentlemen were prosecuted, and they were not gentlemen, I'll stop calling them that. Two of the motherfuckers were prosecuted, and they did do time. So, if the jury was able to say that a rape occurred enough to prosecute two of the seven, how in the fuck... Did Lloyd Irvin, he did nothing. He didn't get hit with nothing. Well, what happened with the other four guys? I forget now. Like I said, you could go out. When I get home, I'll send you a link to everything. Okay. It's hard to keep up with because it's so complex. And then you find out that, you know, this uh, fraternity, that, that this all-black brother fraternity that they belong to, paid for them to uh, have legal right. legal aid. So these, these fucking lawyers did anything and everything. They found every loophole, you know, mm -hmm. and somehow he just got off. So anyhow, that's where it all began. And then stuff started to come out later. <clears throat> and the stuff that I'm speaking of, um, he has some extremely famous, he had some extremely famous Brazilian practitioners that trained under him for a time. And then what happened was, is all of a sudden you started to see these guys who were huge names and all this weird shit was going on. They would just take off and no one would ever hear why they took off, why they, why they disaffiliated themselves with Lloyd Irvin. Mm hmm and then all of a sudden, once it, it, it came out that Lloyd Irvin, he's just fuck, he's allegedly fucking batshit crazy, and he uses power. He has a cult of personality that he's created within his uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu Academy. And it's, man, it's just so disgusting. I could probably sit here and talk to you about this case alone for two to three hours. But, but it, it's come out, it's come to light now that. 
he's claiming that that didn't happen back then in college. That it was a misunderstanding and that, that, the, that the girl was lying. And now we're ha- seeing all these other females come forward. Mm-hmm. And Well, that that's what gets me too. Is like, I, I, like I should have details. I didn't write down any details because I don't want to like, first of all, I don't want to point anybody out specifically. And you guys probably have all heard about this shit anyway, but there have been a, a, several instances in the last few years where like either in high school or college, there'll be a party and like the Steubenville case. Yes, and uh, somebody will get raped, and then that victim will go and commit suicide right. be- because of all the social media stigma that comes of it. It's like it's not like, just the social media stigma; think about the community stigma. Well, that it spreads so much faster, though. Like you know, there there were rumors. You know, I, I I'm we're from just before the generation where you know you would have your fucking picture taken like. The stuff that we did in high school would land and does, you know, like dr- underage drinking and shit like that. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the kids that do that now, they, they end up incriminating themselves by posting it on social media. Yeah. But at the same time, we were basically the originators of Project Mayhem. Yeah. But but at, at the time, you know, like the, in, in our generation, when when rape and shit would happen, you know, it, it would only be known to the people that were there and participated and saw it. And then <clears throat> beyond that, it just became a rumor. And yeah, rumors right. can be shaken off a lot easier, you know, s- small town rumors than, well, this is blown up all over social media and the entire world can watch me get raped by, you mm-hmm. know, a bunch of douchebags. And that, you there know, was a girl, uh, she was my junior year. She was a freshman and she told a bunch of people and she tried to report that she was raped over the weekend. Mm -hmm. School had just started. I was a junior. She was a freshman. There was a young man in between the two of us who was a sophomore who she claimed raped her. Mm -hmm. And this young man was the younger brother of an older brother who was my age. And the two of them were uh, star athletes in the town room of the high school. Mm -hmm. So guess what happened? Nothing. There's no way that so-and-so would ever, no, no way. As if somehow, because he's a fucking good athlete, yeah. as if that somehow correlates. <laughs> I love that shit. Yeah, if he's that, an athlete, he doesn't do anything wrong. No, no, he's a really good soccer player and a great punter on the football team. Yeah, so and somehow that correlates to him being, you know. But yeah. the fact of the matter is, is all of us that knew about it and all of us that heard about it, we absolutely believe that. He was capable of it, and we all believed her story, and but nothing was nothing was fucking ever done. It was disgusting. And and nowadays, there's everybody with a high definition camera in their pocket. You know, a lot of this shit gets caught. But the the downside is it to it is, I mean, you will have incriminating evidence, but it will get spread around so fast that the the stigma that you're putting on that person is is it actually you know. How can I word this? Say that those girls that were raped in that situation uh, didn't have the social media network mm-hmm. to put them out there to give put them under such pressure that they committed suicide. Is that worse than if they didn't have the social media and they had to live with knowing they were raped, but there was no justice brought no, on the saying. rapists? Well, if you, you know, there's one way to look at it is, is I, I completely understand what you're saying. One way to look at it is it's out there so much that it's almost like they're reliving it every time. Mm-hmm. You know, somebody watches it, they're going to hear about it, especially if they're... Oh, yeah, and then they put it on mainstream news. It's like, it's like I really, like, hate media in that, you know, it's like like somebody, there's a car accident, and they'll go up right up to, like, the victim. It's like, oh, your mother just exploded in a car accident, and you had to identify the body. How did that make you feel? Yeah. Like, that made me feel like telling you to go fuck yourself. Let me Get show the you fuck out of my face. You see a microphone. Yeah. Let me show you how it fucking feels. Uh, no, I agree with you 100%. It, it, it is, uh, it's disgusting how much media goes after victims. Like, look, if there's a fucking rape, let's talk about the rape, but let's exclude the victim's name. Yeah. You photos. Know, yeah. Yeah. No names, no photos. Let's focus on the motherfuckers who did it. Right. Let's get, let's get their fucking names out there. Mm-hmm. Let's put on the fucking front page of the newspaper or on, you know, the opening segment of your news channel. Let's I want to see the fucking front of their house. I want to well, see their street. Well, number. that's what kills me too. They will say the victim's name. Yeah. 
But they won't say the suspect's name. All of a sudden, the suspect's allegedly this and allegedly yeah. that. Allegedly the man. Well, what fucking man? And I guess that's, that is, you know, if the guy is innocent, you don't want to go up there, oh, I heard you might have been a rapist. Well, I, obviously, I'm not in jail, motherfucker. Well, if you're going to play the guilt, you know, uh, innocent until proven guilty thing, that's, then how about, then maybe you shouldn't report this story at all. Yeah. Because if you're going to take the victim who's already had something horrible done to her, mm-hmm. or him, in this case... Something we're talking about is <clears throat> rape can occur to both genders. Right. If that's going to happen, don't fucking put that person, don't put the victim through more than they've already been through. Right. And at the same time, too, you don't want to, there is nothing to me, a well, few things more infuriating than being accused of something that you absolutely positively did not do. Yeah. And, uh, no, I know. Yeah. It's fucking infuriating. It's like, listen, well, yeah. motherfucker. Because your fucking back's against the wall, right? And you it's know? like you're you're. There are people that are like wielding f- torches and pitchforks, like we're gonna fuck you up because we think you did something. It's like, dude, innocent until proven guilty. That's what the fucking country's founded upon. Mm-hmm. And it, it, it the exploitation of victims sh- should be protected as well, too. You know? No, I agree with you 100. percent If 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 they're gonna play the innocent until proven guilty card, then they need to not drag the victim through the fucking mud at the same time. Yeah, we shouldn't be hearing about rape cases or, or shit like that until the court is adjourned and the situation is over. <laughs> and the facts have been presented. Right, the facts. I don't want to hear this allegedly. Like, ah, I, 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 that's why I hate the news, it, especially like Yahoo News, where they're like, "You'll never guess what so and so did at this event." And you click on it like, they wore a green dress. And you're like, wow, motherfucker. Sensationalization. Yeah. Fucking, it's, that, that's the problem with media. It's like, hey, we're going to make this seem really awesome. It's also the problem I have on YouTube. Because I don't like to play myself up like, hey, check this out. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. It's like, I don't want to be that. Like, I'm telling you what it is and this is what you're getting. You're not going to give them some soft shoe routine. Yeah. I'm not going to. I'm not going to, you know, put a picture of a hot chick if there's not a hot chick in the video. Yeah. I will not have a thumbnail with cleavage if there is no cleavage. This I swear (laughs) upon this can of energy drink. Mine's gone. So. So, Buttons. How long have we been talking? We have been talking for 32 minutes, roughly. It's crazy because all week, once you gave me the topic of the subject, I had all these fucking great, you know, I've conceptualized. I think I took your window because before I got a hold of my energy drink here, I was just kind of like, I'm tired because fucking running my ass off all night. Basically, if you want to know what I do a lot, uh, what a lot of my work consists of aside from setting up artwork, when I'm not setting up artwork... I'm running something called a Xerox iGen 4, that's I-G-E-N, and this machine is the biggest motherfucker on the planet. It's like a nine foot tall fucking piece of shit, and it's supposed to work really well, but it works like ass. Like, you're supposed to say, oh, I want 9,000 copies of this, and hit go, and then it just copies them, and then you stack them up, and I take them out to you, and you mail them. Mm-hmm. But today, the fucking shit broke, and the stacker broke, which means wait I Wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's put this into perspective. Not today it broke. It breaks all okay. the fucking time. It breaks three out of five days a week the fucker is broken. Okay. It, it's more common for me to come in and have Nate tell me that the iGen's down than for him to tell me that motherfucker's running. So today it didn't want to break down fully. It, it, it The stacker broke. So what, what that means is instead of the thing automatically neatly stacking the printouts, it's just throwing them willy-nilly all over the place out the top. And I have to catch... These 26 inch long by 14 inch wide stacks are pieces of paper that are staticky enough to shock you and snap like arc. I can see sparks coming off of them. And they're sharp enough to cut your yeah, hands and, open, your forearms. Look, look at my arm. I got, <laughs> you, I got cuts all over you my look arm. Look like we just got done doing a couple outtakes of the stick fighting scene from Rambo 3. Yeah, like I got little slash marks all over my forearms and my fingers. Not my fingers so much because I wear gloves because I, I hate paper cuts. But anyway, my, both my forearms are chewed up. I see that. And uh, and so I, I had to catch thousands of sheets of paper by hand and then jog them and stack them while they're sticking together with static and trying to cut my fingers off. Because this fucking piece of shit iGen sucks. So I want everybody 
to go online and tweet at Xerox and tell them they suck. <laughs> tell them that they really need to get this shit with the iGen worked out. Because yeah. they're putting Nathan and I both out of work. Yeah. Because when Nate can't run his iGen, that leaves me out in the bindery on the plant floor unable to fucking mail shit. Which is costing us money, or costing the company money, which is threatening our job integrity. That's not fucking cool, man. So fuck you, Xerox. Make a machine that works. Do not fuck with my livelihood. Or don't make a machine at all. Yeah. Uh, you know, where the fuck, where are these Xerox, where, where's that made? I don't know. You don't know? But the, the machine. As much are, as I hate to say it, if that son of a bitch came from Germany, it'd probably run like a fucking dream. Well, that's what the... Muller Martini presses, those are all, all the well, web that's what, that's what all I'm the saying. web presses are made in Germany. Yeah, like that press that Chris Wetzel runs. Yeah, that thing's a striped ass eight, man. Yeah. Sixty five thousand copies an hour. What am I running? Like a thousand an hour and it's not working half the time? Yeah. It's like me trying to run those that ad rap job today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the last <coughs> the last four and a half hours of the night I was running that ad rap job on my inserter at two thousand pieces an hour. That's what I was running at. Mm -hmm. Now it was shutting itself down and right. pusher jams and whatnot. Let's see. I'm going to Google if I can pull it up on my phone. Where is Xerox made? We're off the subject of rape, by the way. Isn't that uh, the iGen? Isn't that like one of only a few? Well, that's the 8250. We okay, have like the prototype. That's, that's what I'm thinking of. But, yeah. Uh, so back to the topic at hand. What else do you think we need to... Well, let's, let's talk about. Uh, let's talk about the fact that this is we talked we said rape culture, but we haven't even really touched on what actually rape culture is. Define it. Uh, in my eyes, rape culture is the unnecessary culture of men and women who both go farther to disavow that rape is a problem more than it is. Can't did I say it? That was a horrible explanation. Nathan. Off subject. Yeah. Xerox is from Rochester, New York. Okay. You need a cattle prod when I can't put my thoughts. <laughs> yeah, when I can't put my thoughts in the sentences. You need to shock. Well, me. here's what. So I, look, I, I can I, give an example. Well, what my what my definition of what rape culture is, and I'm going big on this, is not just about rape itself, but how society reacts to rape. Absolutely, that's what I was trying to get at. You see, you see, good job. And. There's so many different reactions to it because, because uh, there's there's always <laughs> it sucks being a white dude trying to talk about problems because everybody's like you're a white dude what the fuck do you know you don't know nothing it's like I know how to enslave the planet apparently clearly yeah clearly I'm a monster even though I'm from yeah I, I got that and even right. though both of us are from slave slave backgrounds yeah it's like wait a wait a second oh, wait, you guys are slobs that what the fuck yeah. does that mean I don't know what's slob with e on it motherfucker well it's not they're not connected but yeah <laughs> I'm from Eastern Europe motherfucker my fucking family wasn't even here when that shit took place and on top of that slobs were slaves too to a degree some of them were yeah the Irish were slaves you know so fucking. But we're not talking about slavery. Yeah. <laughs> we're talking about how... <coughs> we're all over the place. How not... How not... This is what happens when you have caffeine, guarana, B12, B6, lethanine, and taurine. For enhanced mental acuity. Yeah, for enhanced mental ADD. Uh, where was I going with this? Anyway, what I'm saying is... Not all white... Men are fucking Hitler. Yeah, please. Actually, I'm a white man who hates Hitler probably more than fucking anyone on this planet. Hitler was a Jewish vegetarian painter. Just putting that out there. Yeah, and he had really, really bad gas. Did he? Yeah, that's why. You, yeah, you you never heard about that. Uh uh He was a fucking nutcase. He uh, part of his sociopathy was he was ashamed of what he he thought he was he had gratuitous gas. So he stopped eating meat, and, and he switched to an all vegetarian diet, which vegetables are fiber, right? Right. So he would take he was taking all these, uh, who knows what the fucking he was probably taking anything to get his hands on, but he was taking stuff to treat his gas, which then caused him to have uh, intestinal pain. So then the doctors were giving him, uh, I believe, barbiturates or something. They were giving him some kind of strong, maybe he's an opioid. For pain, which in, then in turn 
cause him to be constipated all the time. So no wonder that guy's a fucking yeah. jerk. <laughs> Why is Hitler so pissed? Dude, fucking he hasn't taken a shit in three weeks, man. Well, he does eat zucchini and he can't fucking, shit. That dude's hurting. Now he's going to kill everybody. <laughs> uh, anyway, so rape culture, and we're going to get bitched at by feminists that are going to be like, oh, you guys, you're part of the problem. Yeah, you're part of the problem, too. If you weren't getting raped all the time, there wouldn't be any rape. It's your fault. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> I'm joking, obviously. And on that note, I'm going to take my... <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> if you weren't such an easy target, see, that, that's, the, that's, that's what you'll get into. That's one of the arguments you'll hear. Um, this is for the girl that goes out drinking by herself and gets raped. Right. Well, if she wouldn't have gone out drinking by herself, she wouldn't have got raped. It's like, douchebag. If the rapist wasn't there, she wouldn't have got raped either. You know? It's like saying, okay, if you wouldn't have walked outside when it was raining, you wouldn't have gotten hit by lightning. Yeah. To a degree, it's like that, but it's even worse. That's one of the biggest broad generalization, idiot, stupid, fucking asshole comments. I, and you hear it all the time. There's so many people that that truly believe that if a woman gets raped, it's somehow her fault to a degree. Or right. Or some believe wholly well, that's, that's that it's That's the other her. thing that uh, the women that dress provocatively... You know, they got the, the whole sign that says, this is what I was wearing when I was raped. Tell me I asked for it, you know. Yeah. It's like, you didn't ask for it, but hormonally, the guy is fucked up, obviously. He can't mm-hmm. keep his shit in check mentally. So, it doesn't matter go, what you were wearing. The dude yeah. was fucking crazy. Yeah. I, I don't believe that there's anything a woman can ever do. I don't care if <clears throat> she goes to the fucking club with nothing but a G-string on and some pasties that gives no man the right to rape her. Right. Now, did she make a bad choice? Sure. You know, you fucked up. Right. But at no point in time did the choices that she made give anyone the right or give anyone... The green light. For There's nothing that equals okay to rape. Right, ever. right. There's, there's no... There's no okay for rape, you know. That's, There's no algorithm that <laughs> says that ends in a place. Well, she was wearing titty twizzlers and a green glow-in-the-dark thong, so I had to rape her. I don't care if you see a woman sitting on a park bench, butt naked, jabbing a lightsaber between her legs. With her ankles behind her head. If that's what she chooses to do, then she's doing it to herself. That doesn't mean that because you're a fucking Neanderthal who cannot contain your emotions, that it's okay for you to just run over there and rape her. Exactly. Because how do you think that guy would feel if a huge fucking massive dude that just loved the fuck other dudes decided, hey, oh, looking mighty look, fine. Look at boy. this little buttercup. Looking mighty fine in them jeans, boy. And he just grabs you, holds you down, and just like... Brock, Real like a pig. Brock Lesnar fucks you and there's <laughs> nothing that you can do. That's horrible. How would that guy? How would the how would the raping men of the well, world? Well, clearly the guy was asking for it by wearing those tight jeans. Eric. Obviously. <laughs> so put that. He in should not listen. It's everyone that knows him knows that he puts on a gratuitous amount of Jacar Noir every time he leaves the house. He's just asking for trouble. He's asking for it. wearing so, Jacar. So, so it's for all the guys that that say to the girl. I mean, obviously, okay, if you are a girl. It's probably not in your best intentions to go out by yourself with people you don't know and become intoxicated on any kind of substance. Dress scantily. Because that's just not a good idea for anybody. Now, is, well, hold on. Now, is that good? No, it sucks. It sucks that that's the world that we live in. Right. It sucks. We, we all should be able to go out and do fucking stupid shit. And we and, should and all be able to... not worry about other people yeah. fucking us and up. We, we, should, we should be able to trust that... that you know, our brothers and sisters within society will not fuck with us in, you know, multiple ways. But, but unfortunately, is, the yeah, reality... The reality the, is somebody rea- yeah. could try to fuck with you the or re- fuck you. The reality of the world is that this earth, humanity, is filled with sick, mother- sick depraved motherfuckers. I'm going to say at least 35% of the population is kind of fucked up. It's to, and it, it seems like it's growing. I think it's because of the internet. I think it's because of the internet. I think it's because of television. You know, when we were kids and we were growing up and we, we loved watching violent movies and we loved listening to crazy fucking music and people would say, oh, it's not the music, it's not the video games, it's not TV. And we would be like, yeah, it's not. And now I'm getting older and it's like, guess what? It fucking kind of is. 
To a degree. It's an oversaturation of... Well, it's desensitization. Desensitization. Well, desensitization it comes from... Overexposure. Oversaturation. Yeah. It's a desensitization from oversaturation of graphic media. Yeah, and oversexualization. Now, I do believe that... Think, think about how... So it, I do believe that freedom of speech should be still be there because I hate censorship. Yeah. But you still need an age filter because think about this shit. Stuff I could I can't even I could never have imagined the shit I have seen like on the internet yeah. in the last decade. Well I talked to you about that the other day. It's like, like when, you know we talk like, about you you talk to your grandpa like I saw some shit and you're like, No, you didn't, grandpa, you ain't seen nothing. Paul Paul, you haven't been the four chan. Yeah, you don't know what's out there on the internet. I've seen some shit. And everybody, like, and kids are so much more tech savvy to, like, the nth degree than their parents, like... Than we are, than you and I are. Exactly. That they're, they're, into, they're getting into this shit. I remember uh, my uncle, when he first got the internet, he's not very tech savvy, and he has kids. And I guess his daughter was probably 13 years old. She's like, I googled something, and what I got was, like, a... a a man with breasts and you know she was googling something and got some transsexual porn yeah and i was like now if i had been 13 and see that i'd be like what the fuck is this shit well the fucked up thing is, is exactly what you just said like that, you, you could you could type you could go to yahoo type just come up with the most random stuff like awesome vacuum cleaner you could just type in awesome vacuum cleaner and and hit search with the search engine and then go and click on images and i guarantee you Somewhere within the first five tiers of pictures, there's going to be something that's pornographic. Well, it's not so much the case with Google anymore because they changed their search engine to, to only show porn if they're specifically... Well, I said Yahoo. Okay. Because I use Yahoo. Yahoo and Bing, though, you could search puppy dogs and you're going to get a <laughs> bucket of penises. Yeah, you'll get God knows. And some like, what was a, oh, titty man. sprinkles and whatnot. But Mr. Biscuits. Google has fixed their search to where unless you're specifically like you could t- you could go to Google right now and search in uh, I don't even know any current porn stars it's just Jenna Jameson she's from the 90s search Jenna Jameson and you're not going to get probably not going to get any Stoya. hardcore who Stoya okay Stoya S T O Y A she's a pale chick she's good she's Christy Mac <laughs> Christy Mac what a gnarly <laughs> chick. Christy Mack. Taking minivans up the ass. Now you might, with Christy Mack, it's questionable because I don't think there are any pictures of her that don't have her jamming a van up her ass. <laughs> anyway, but supposedly... What that fucking douchebag of an ex-boyfriend that she had? If you go to Google... changed his name to War Machine. <laughs> if you go to Google and search a porn star's name, unless you type in sucking dicks or porn after it, will not levy you porn. It will just bring you uh, G to PG-13 rated images... Of said individual. Good on Google. Based on where you're searching from, if you're using Google.de for Germany, I cannot guarantee your safety. You don't want anything to do with <laughs> pornography from Germany. <laughs> fucking Germans are fucked up fucking people. It's like after they, they had to get over Hitler, they got over Hitler by inventing shit porn. <laughs> well, but, maybe that's just how they felt. I don't know. So uh, something I wanted to bring up before I forget about it, because that's how my mind works. We were talking about how fucked up kids are nowadays because they're so tech savvy and they've grown up with an oversaturization of violence and sexuality. Think about how sexualized children are. And one of the things that comes to my mind... But the the thing is they don't even think about it that way. They're so inundated with it, it doesn't even seem like it could be morally wrong to them. Yeah. Well, what I wanted to bring up is... Is the way that adults bring children into a sexualized light, and I find it fucking horribly disgusting. Um, my wife watches a couple shows that are on, I think it's the Learning Channel, TLC, or something like that. That's hardly the Learning Channel anymore. But that's just the name they use, the moniker. Um, and I cannot remember, well, I remember what it is now. It's like Toddlers and Tiaras. Mm hmm. And it's a fucking, like, beauty queen pageant for little kids, right? That's where Honey Boo Boo came from, right? I don't know. I don't watch that shit. I just, they're on the weekends when I'm at home at night. Eva watches a couple shows in this fucker. And then in between the commercial breaks, you see lead-ins to their other shows. One mm-hmm. is just, like, toddlers and TRs and shit. And the, they have these little girls 
And it, all the stuff that you see are these little girls, like four, five, six, seven, eight years old, right? Mm-hmm. And then they they they're fucking dressed up like if, if if you would see the way they have these girls dress up, these young girls are dressed the way if an adult woman was dressed that way and acting the way they do on stage, you'd be like, man, she's acting like a fucking skank. So you have fucking parents conditioning, skank, can, yeah, skanking out their kids. And what happens is you're taking your kid and you're allowing your kid to act that way at a beauty pageant. Mm-hmm. Now, how is that child going to be able to differentiate between the way they're acting at a pageant and how that relates to regular, normal, everyday life? I think a lot of that, too, is it's it's sad mothers that couldn't be what they wanted to be. So they're they're um, living through their they're, child. They're living what's vicariously through vicariously. their child. Like, oh, I couldn't be a beauty queen. My daughter's a beauty queen. I'm too fat to fly. Yeah, I'll truss her up like a, a, a Hollywood whore, and then she'll win the award, and I'll be so proud because she was the fruits of my loins. Wasn't uh, Joan Benet Ramsey? Wasn't she? Yeah, she was. You know, I just, I didn't, I just, she I, didn't was, put, that was, I, I think she was one of the child she, beauty queens. Yeah, queens. she was, and she's the one that just like fucking disappeared. Mm-hmm. It was probably sold more like it. Something. Anybody that would treat their child like an object yeah, does you, not deserve to no, have a child. No, 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 I agree. But it's funny if you're fucking loaded and you're rich and shit like that, how child services won't come and look in on how it is that you treat your children. Mm-hmm. Oh, they got money. The kids are fine. They're loaded. They would never, never. Rich people never do bad things. The pedigree of kids. the parents is far too good to do such Horrible thing. It's clear that Flo and Lance are blue bloods. They're the wonderful parents. I can prove that their pedigrees here on the wall. Four generations back, they shared a grandfather. Yeah. The genes are pure. Pure fuckery. But yeah. We kind of slid off the subject. I think we burned ourselves out on it. The only thing we didn't talk about was statutory rape. And that thing, to me... I don't even think statutory rape should be referred to as rape mm-hmm. because it's not. What, what, if, what if it actually is though? Well, it depends. I mean, how can you define something that was consensual? I, well, the statutory rape always mean it was consensual, but the sta- eight, hold on, hold on. This consi- the statutory rape mean and is the legalese of that word? Does it mean <coughs> someone had sex with someone else, and the only thing that made it illegal was the age of one of the participants? Yes. Okay. It was uh, someone under the legal age of consent, which is 18 in this country. It's like between 15 and 16 in most of the rest of the world. I think, isn't it different in some states? It, that It's a gray area. Okay. Like, I know in Japan it's 14 if the other party is not more than four years older than you. Like an 18-year-old can have sex with a 14-year-old, mm-hmm. I believe. And then there's like Canada, it's 16, but again, not if you're older than like 22. Okay. And I know in like Sweden, it's like 15. It's, I don't know, it's, it depends. Every country's got their own rule. I know the United States is among one of the higher age groups for consent federally. Um, but my understanding of statutory rape is you're over the age of 18. Your partner is not of legal age or you, you are above the, the age of consent. They are not, but they still consent. And the argument there is that that is rape is because until this person hits a certain age, they are not mature enough to decide if they really are ready to deal with the consequences of sexual activity. And I think most people, the younger people aren't because they don't, I mean, some people are more mature than others, but a lot of people, I mean, they are not ready for the mental attachment that goes along with it. So how do you make the distinction? Yeah, Right. It's. I really don't know how you could make a law out of it, and I, I really, it, I, I feel like any case of statutory rape that wants to be prosecuted, I believe that the victim, the victim, the consenting person that was below the age of consent should be evaluated by a psychologist to determine if they're mentally, you know, capable of making that decision. So in other words, decision. there shouldn't be like a broad spectrum law, right? That yeah, each case should be treated solely. Because and like, singularly upon its own. Like me, for example, like but I, when I was nineteen, I was five foot six. I weighed one hundred sixty pounds. By the time I was twenty two, I was six foot one. I weighed two hundred pounds. Wait a minute, you weren't five six when you were nineteen. Yeah, I was. I was short. 
I wore boots, Eric. I don't remember. You I didn't. Wearing... I didn't have my growth spurt until like my first semester at college. I don't ever remember you being that short. It's crazy. I remember I was short. <laughs> I've lo- I looked at my yearbook recently. I was like, I was one of the shorter people. Like I didn't, because I, I, I remember when I came back uh, for Christmas, everybody's like, "Man, you, you're taller all of a sudden." I'm like, hey, I don't know. That grew, motherfucker. Yeah. So been eating my greens. But I think I was a sloucher too, so I might have been like five eight. I'm the same way. I, I I never stand up straight. So then people are like, "How tall are you?" And I'm like six three and a half. And they're like, "No, you're not." And then they stand up straight. And they're like, "Wow, you are." Yeah. Well, I was probably I was probably a five eight sloucher, but I know I grew like at least four inches that first semester away from home. And so, like for me, like like if I was fourteen, in my eyes, me as a fourteen year old, I was a fucking child. You know, I was yeah. a kid. I don't know what the fuck was going on. Yeah. Definitely would not have been like I would have been willing <laughs> to lay some pipe, but not ready for the ramifications that go with it. But girls, on the other hand, mature like you know between three and five years faster than guys. So physically mature. Physically, that yeah. doesn't mean that they're mentally. Mentally, yeah. I think yeah. is a person by person basis because I think me as a fourteen year old would probably think me as a thirty year old is an immature piece of shit because. When I was a kid, I tried to act more like an adult. Yeah. Which is why I think I act more like a kid now. <laughs> well, what I, what I was trying to say is that I believe, of course, a girl can look mature. Like, her body kind of matures at a, at a faster rate than young men do. But when it comes to the subject of sex, is a young girl and a young man, are they able to have sex early? Absolutely. But that doesn't mean that they're able or capable of dealing with the mental ramifications of what follows from sex. Yeah, and like... When you grow up and you're, you know, you get to be older, you get to be our age, you are aware of the fact that there can be... Bad consequences. Well, there can be consensual, casual sex. Right. Where you have sex and you're not attached to the person. Right. But when you're young, at least I know I was, when I was young, when I thought of sex, I automatically drew the line of correlation between... Sex and love. Right. And your brain does that too. And when you're a teenager, your brain is not fully developed. Right. So you're pumping your brain full of <clears throat> oxytocin, which makes you feel horribly attached to somebody against your will. You know, even oxy it, pads? No. When you clean your face. No, I know. Come on. No. It's, it, it's basically the chemical that causes love to happen. Mm-hmm. And like, I was probably like, I can't remember how old, late teens, 17, 18, something like that. And I was dating this chick before I went down to Carbondale, and fucking, that was the first chick I hooked up with a lot. Yeah. And so my brain's like, full of oxytocin, kicking ass, and I was like, I really like this chick. But Well, no, you were convinced you loved her. Right. To well, say. basically, yeah. My brain was like, we're in love with her, and she was uh, a little bit younger than me, but mentally and physically more mature than me, so right. she was looking at it like a casual relationship, and she was able to just... Cut it the fuck off. She's like, oh, I'm gonna go date somebody else. And so I'm, shit went sour. Shit went sour because you know she was she's a flighty type anyway. She she fools around on her husband now. I won't say her name, but uh, she's not a steady type of gal. She's not a monogamous lady. We'll put it that way. It's disgusting. And so why well, get married? Yeah, right, right. And so while I was chemically attached at the hip, she basically fucked me up. And because mentally I was not prepared for that, I was fucked up for like six months. <laughs> well, hold on. Let's let's. I want to stop for a second here because you're saying you were chemically attached. Why why do you just make it that? Why do you you're making another broad generalization? Why not just say that you were actually in love with her? It's not a bad thing to say well, that you were. I know that I was, but I don't think it was a real like I I don't want to call it love because it wasn't mutual. You know what I mean? It doesn't have to be. I, because we're talking about the subject, the fact of the matter that it wasn't, it wasn't uh, reciprocal, right? But so you can still, I mean, you can love someone and they not love you back. Well, when, when the, that's just my way of coping with it. When well, I, that's what I'm talking about. When, we, I, I'm thinking maybe we need to talk about this a little well, more. Well, when I say we can have a breakthrough moment here, well, and I can help you, I can help you get past well, this. Well, that's that's when I deal with it. When when I deal <clears> with it, I say it's it was chemical because in my head it had to have been because. 
it's not natural. I, for me, I don't believe it's natural to love somebody that much and have them think you're a douchebag. <laughs> okay, well, this, I want, this is what I want you to do. I want you to think of it the way Eric would think of it. Okay. You loved her. She didn't love you back. Fuck her. She fucked up. Her loss. Actually, I feel much better about the fact that she didn't end up with me. I look at her now like a fucking dodged bullet. After that's what I, I'm saying. But I was blinded by, Listen, the, that's the, by, the, by the chemical of it, though. Her fucking loss. Well, maybe that's what love is. Why? Yeah. Like what? Well, that's you're, exactly you're, what you're love saying, is. But well, then why are you why are you making it like it's something else? Well, I, you're I, like, I, no, no, no. It was chemicals. It wasn't love. Like, well, no, it wasn't love. Because it wasn't. because for me, love is supposed to be mutual. For me, any love that's not mutual is a chemical imbalance because it's an we, imbalanced we, relationship. We, well, I think that's just my definition of it. I think reality matters. We all hope that our love is mutual and reciprocal, but at times it's not. And if it's not, here's what you do: you treat that shit like an infected limb. That's that was my new strategy. After that, yeah, is cut if, it off. as soon as and as painful as it is, it is not as painful as dragging it out for months yeah, get, on end. Get the fuck out. Do yourself a favor. Get the fuck out. If if, if <coughs> this goes for men and women both, yeah, this is this is mutually. It's not it's not exclusive on gender, and this is how we're gonna wind up the show because we're coming up on an hour if we haven't hit it already. Uh, if if this is our closing words on our 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 deep episode is if you are in a, a, a relationship where you are putting in all the work and getting nothing in return, bring that up. And if it's not reciprocated or they tell you it's not mutual, then that is a severed limb. Look at it. Look at it as if your, your left arm has gangrene. Okay. And it's coming up to the elbow. You can either cut your arm off at the elbow or you can let that shit infect your entire body and kill you. Eric says, get the fuck out. Yeah. So, Sever bad relationships if they can't be repaired or if they're not mutual. Men and women both never ever think that you cannot do better than the situation that you're in. And don't think that, uh, you know, it's there's not no, worth waiting for somebody yeah, better. There's no such thing as someone being better than you. And don't ever think that you can't do better than someone else. And there's somebody out there for everybody. Yeah. And to find them, you have to get out of your comfort zone. Men and women both deserve... To be in a relationship that is reciprocal with love and respect and all the good stuff. So take that to heart. Leave us your questions, comments, concerns, complaints. What did we fuck up on? How, tell us if we're <laughs> fucking ignorant bastards. We want your input. Nobody's commenting. I know like a hundred of you are listening a week. Somebody fucking leave a comment. All right. If you made it this far, you're obligated to comment. Leave your comments below and we will see you next Thursday night, Friday morning. I'm Eric Theodorovich. And I am Nathaniel Lee. Nathaniel Day-Lewis. Nathaniel Day-Lewis. And we will see you next week. We love you, motherfuckers. Bye, motherfuckers.